His Excellency Mr. Benny Omer, Ambassador of State of Israel to Nepal. Her Excellency Dr. Anjan Sakya, Ambassador of Nepal to State of Israel. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the joint webinar of Center for Diplomacy and Development and Nepal Institute for International Cooperation on Nepal-Israel Relations, 60 Years of Excellent Partnership. To speak on this interesting topic, we have excellent panels. Uh, to start the program, may I now re uh, request uh, Mr. Mohan Krishna Sesta, founding president of CDD and former Nepalese ambassador to France to deliver welcome remarks. Uh, thank you, Pramodzi. Dear audience and friends at home and abroad, on behalf of Center for Diplomacy and Development and Nepal Institute for International Cooperation and Engagement, I would like to welcome you all at this webinar. Actually, this is the fourth webinar we have hosted, and we have found that this is a very convenient uh, way of reaching the people. Maybe it is a gift of lockdown, I think. Today, we have invited uh, for this topic His Excellency Ambassador Benny Omar and Her Excellency Dr. Anjad Sakya. And I hope uh, after some time, they will be making their excellent presentations on the state of relations between our two countries. However, I feel on the basis of my knowledge, it will not be a very bad idea to speak a few words about our relations. On 1st of June 1960, Nepal and Israel established diplomatic relations. And ever since, we have been maintaining very good uh, excellent relations. Actually, one fact which has been enumerated by our ambassadors also, a very important fact is there in our relations. When the State of Israel was established in 1948, Nepal was among the foremost countries to recognize the State of Israel. This, the government and people of Israel has never forgotten this fact. Actually, Israel is a very developed country and Nepal is a popular destination for Israeli people, especially among the young. Personally, I also hold good admiration for the people of Israel. They are very friendly, very skilled, and uh, they have a lot of astuteness. They are good businessmen, excellent diplomats, and of course, valiant soldiers. I remember that uh, when I read some uh, news items some time ago, there was also one uh, Mr. Benny Pellet, who was a former chief of the Israeli Air Force. I think there are many Benny in Israel, as our ambassador is also Benny Homer. Uh, he was such a skilled pilot, fighter pilot, who flew all types of fighter planes of that time. I have read, I remember that news item uh, which I read some time ago. And also, Israel is such a country which is surrounded by 27 hostile countries. Eight, they are the most uh, dynamic and vibrant country known to everybody. And uh, more details report coming from board ambassadors. I don't need to go on details about this. And uh, on a personal note, me and my wife visited Israel in March 2014, when I was ambassador in Paris, and we stayed about 10 days with a short hop to Cyprus also. We found Israel a very nice country, very clean and very decent. People are very friendly. And also we visited Dead Sea, about 422 meters down from the art between Israel and Jordan border. There was a temple in which the sacred water of uh, Dead Sea and the stone of Everest was put together and it was attracting a lot of tourists also. I want to mention here one trait of Israeli people. That is, Israeli people come to decision very lately after going all details. But once they come to decision and agree, they fully implemented. This is the impression which I got 
from the readings about Israel. With these few words, I would like to thank our ambassadors for accepting our invitation today. And I hope their presentations will be contributing to strengthen our relations between our two countries and, uh, and our two people. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The first speaker for today's event is His Excellency Mr. Benny Omar, Ambassador of the State of Israel to Nepal. His Excellency Mr. Benny Omar is serving as the Ambassador of the State of Israel to Nepal. Earlier, he served at Charge Affairs at Embassy of Israel at Kathmandu, Ambassador to Cameroon, Ambassador to Cote d'Ivoire, Chief of Department at the Political Research Center at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Jerusalem, Head of Office of in Interest in Israel in Tunis, Tunisia, First Secretary Political Affairs at the Embassy of Israel in Brussels, Belgium, Second Secretary Political Affairs at the Embassy of Israel in Ankara, Turkey. He holds the degree in law uh, from Tel Aviv University. He has a specialization on the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Excellency, the floor is yours. You have around 20, 25 minutes. Namaskar. Hello, everybody. Hello, dear Anjan. <laughs> Hello, all the friends in Nepal. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful introduction. Uh, I, I have to apologize first for joining a little bit late. I have some urgency in the family. I apologize for that. But uh, definitely, as Mohan said at the beginning, Ambassador Shrestha, there are so many good Shrestas around this beautiful country. <laughs> and uh, he just mentioned a few facts about Israel. You know, we are a young uh, country, but an old nation. It's more history, more than 3,700 years. And uh, we were obliged, as you know, to spend some 2,000 years out of our country in what we call diaspora. And finally, 72 years ago, in 1948, we got our independence, being recognized by the family of nation in United Nations in New York. And after 2000 years of absence, we came back to our homeland. And we are thankful for that. And in the context of Nepal, we do not forget that Nepal was the first country in South Asia to recognize Israel. And the prime minister at the time, Bipi Koirela, visited Israel in August 1960. And it was a historic visit during which he met Ben Gurion, the father of our independence, our first prime minister, a historic personality that we do not forget, to whom we owe our independence today. It was a very courageous decision from his side, although most of the leaders at the time, there was no government, of course, but the, the government to become were against because we were surrounded by Arab countries hostile to our existence in the region, and we were attacked by five different armies. And we were only 600,000 people at the time, no air force, no weapons. We can say that it is a miracle that the state of Israel was established on the 14th of May, 1948, Friday afternoon in Tel Aviv, Ben Gurion declared independence. And then for six months, we had a, a war of independence. And finally, uh, we could enlarge the borders more than what the international community offered us in the, on the 29th of November, 1947. That was the famous partition plan, who decided that the British mandate at the time should be uh, cut into two, one future Israel, Jewish nation, the other one future Palestine. We accepted the, the program, the partition plan, but the Palestinian side refused. And that is how we have this tragedy of the Palestinian refugees until today. Sorry for, there is a problem of telecommunication. Let me see if I am again with you. I am again with you. I don't know if you hear me. We can hear you, sir. Yes, sorry for that. I, I have a problem here, a technical one. But if you hear me, uh, that's already good. Just to say that since uh, Nepal recognized Israel on the 1st of June and we established relationship, we have a special place in our heart uh, that we consider Nepal a very important friend of the state of Israel. And since then, the relations are wonderful. We are this year celebrating 60 years of diplomatic relationship. 
between our two countries and the cooperation in many fields was flourishing along the time. And one of the major events we can all remember is the aftermath of the, after the earthquake of April 2015, during which Israel was one of the first nations to send aid, uh, humanitarian and medical aid to Nepal. Uh, still, we are facing a wonderful potential that Dr. Anjan back in Israel, Ambassador Anjan Sakya and myself, and later on my successor will continue, and like my predecessors did, to diversify the relationship, to add more elements, not only cooperation with Mashav, which is a developing a relationship with developing countries in the fields of education, agriculture, health, and gender issues, for example. Not only that, since the last seven years, every year, 500 young Nepali farmers go to Israel for a period of 11 months in what we call Learn and Earn Project. And during 11 months, they work in a kibbutz, in a moshav, and they learn what is modern agriculture like we do in Israel. And once they come back home, many of them create cooperatives. Many cooperatives, you find them in Ilam, in Japa, in Lamjung. Lamjung is the biggest one with 116 members. And they do, they created like a small kibbutz in Israel. And you have uh, flowers and vegetables and animal husbandry and producing. Like, it's amazing to see the success story of this wonderful project. It is like a jewel in the, in the crown. And I'm so proud that we have it since the last seven years. Although nowadays, because of uh, COVID-19, we are facing a problem, logistic, how to bring back the Nepalis, the 500 who are in Israel, and to send the new ones to go again for another year. I hope we shall overcome this problem soon. But I can tell you that during the last few years that I, I could be here, the last more than two and a half years, uh, we are trying also to work with the, not only the government to government, which is uh, very important as an embassy and very natural for us, but also to diversify activities with the civil society, as well as the private sector of Nepal and Israel. And in this context, we are trying to uh, advance a few agreements that are pending between our countries the cooperation in the fields of energy, education, culture, and many others. And hopefully, uh, following a last visit of the head of Mashav, Ambassador Gil Haskell, in December 19, uh, I hope that we can establish in the near future what we call Center of Excellence in Agriculture, in horticulture mainly. It's a model that has been working many years in India. It's a wonderful success story. And I believe and I hope that soon the government of Nepal will, will give a green light for that because the model is that Israel brings the know-how and the hosting country is covering the whole finance of it. Once we have a green light from the government of Nepal for financing this project, we will be able to establish the first center of excellence in agriculture and later on to have for each province among the seven provinces of Nepal, each province should have one center of excellence in agriculture. Uh, we have some more ideas. Uh, maybe I should stop here and uh, let you continue with the other speakers. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Excellency. Um, now we'd like to move to the next speaker. May I now request Her Excellency Dr. Anjan Sakya to make her remarks. Namaste, all of you. Uh, Ambassador Beni and President of uh, Center for Diplomacy, Mr. Mohan Krishnasrestha, and mod uh, moderator, Dr. Pramod, and all the participants joining in this Zoom webinar, and also who are participating via Facebook. Uh, all of you, uh, good afternoon. And I would like to thank organizer for organizing this Zoom conference uh, to celebrate our 60 years uh, of anniversary between uh, our two countries of our diplomatic relations. Uh, as uh, I heard from Ambassador Beni, uh, he has uh, explained uh, more about our relations between Nepal and Israel. Actually, uh, Nepal uh, is the first uh, country in South Asia who recognized uh, Israel as a state in uh, 19... Uh, uh, 1960, 
uh, June 1st, when we established our diplomatic relations. And our um, uh, late Prime Minister, Bibi Koirala, also visited uh, Israel. Uh, and then after in 1961, Embassy of Israel in Nepal was established. And our late King uh, visited Nepal in 1963, late King Mahindra. And then after, uh, uh, from, there are so many visits from uh, Israel, Israel as well as from Nepal. And uh, I would like to um, uh, tell you about uh, a, a brief about our relations between Nepal and Israel. At the very uh, first, I would like to say Israel is uh, a beautiful country and one of the most innovative countries in the world. Nepal is the country where most of the Israelis said uh, Nepal is their second home and they would like to visit Nepal and again, uh, uh, again and again. Whoever visited Nepal definitely uh, th that Israeli would like to visit Nepal. And Nepal recognized the uh, state of Israel uh, as I already mentioned uh, and we since then we have uh, very excellent bilateral relations. The relationship between the two nations have remained always amicable. And now we are celebrating a 60th anniversary of this uh, establishment of our diplomatic relations. The first uh, day, June 1st, uh, 2020, when uh, this year we are celebrating 60 uh, years of our relations. So uh, we, succeed, we are successful to establish uh, telephone talks between uh, our uh, prime minister, uh, our prime ministers between Nepal and Israel and also uh, foreign ministers between two countries. And um, uh, we have all already exchanges uh, their uh, messages, both of them. Uh, and also we have lots of plan to celebrate our 60th anniversary. And I would like to um, highlight some of my works that I started uh, my journey in Israel as ambassador. I met several uh, times to the uh, president of State of Israel in different occasion after I presented my letter of credence uh, to His Excellency on 14th February 2019. He expressed his gratitude towards Nepali soldiers who are rendering exemplary works in a number of UN missions stationed in and around Israel and are working tirelessly towards regional stability. He reiterated that Israel's values, the friendship between Nepal and Israel, that dates back to decades. I invoke the motto of government of Nepal uh, as prosperous Nepal, happy Nepali, exhorted for Israeli support in the forms of transfer of technology in diverse sectors, like as our uh, friend uh, Ambassador Beni told, in agriculture, irrigation, education, health, information and technology, uh, as well as in establishing centers of excellence uh, of agriculture sectors in all provinces in Nepal. And President uh, Revelin expressed his commitments to meet all initiatives taken by the government of Nepal, which is very welcoming uh, part for, for Nepal to us. And I started to establish endless friendship with Israeli people from the very beginning. I found them as our uh, as President Mr. Mohan Krishna said that I found them very warm, cordial. And I would like to say before I left uh, Kathmandu, Ambassador Beni told me that Israeli people are like Sabra. And I really found that they are just like Sabra. It's a cactus fruit and they are very hospitable. The cactus fruit, the Sabra is like the outside is very hard and inside they are very soft. Uh, and with your loveliness, uh, my more than a year here passed so fast that I couldn't even realize it's almost now one year and uh, more than five months already. Visionary leaders like BP Koirala of Nepal and David Ben Gurio uh, of Israel played crucial role in shaping and nurturing our bilateral relations. Over the years, leaders and people of uh, both the countries have contributed to further develop and strengthen the bond of friendship and cordiality existing between our two countries. I'm thankful to the government of Israel for their continuous support in various fields such as agriculture, education, energy, trade, tourism, science and technology, foreign employment, etc. 
since I assumed my office, I have been continuously talking with uh, ministers and high level officials uh, from various ministries of government of Israel. I would like to bring to light some areas that we explored. Uh, the first of all, I would like to highlight about the agriculture sector, which is most important for Nepal, because uh, Nepalese people around 60, more than 65% uh, people are engaged in agriculture sector, whereas uh, less than 3% uh, Israelis are engaged in agriculture sector, but not only they can feed their citizen, but also they are exporting uh, in, the, in abroad. So we have to learn uh, this system from Israel. So in meetings, I paid uh, my utmost efforts in establishing agriculture center of excellence in all seven provinces of Nepal. Now it is at the final stage of shining of MOU. It will create self-employment in this agro sector in Nepal if we can open center of excellence very, very soon. Thousands of Nepalese will get employment in Nepal so that uh, many youth countries who are going abroad, not, not, uh, then after they will get opportunity in Nepal, inside our country. And in this uh, center of excellence, the Israeli technological cooperation will assist in transforming Nepali agriculture from subsistence level to commercial level. And the background is, of course, Mashab. I would like to mention here, Mashab is Israel's Agency of International Development Cooperation has been providing training to Nepalese nationals working in private and government sector. Around 500 Nepali students, uh, they travel to Israel under um, uh, Learn and Earn project annually for agriculture training programs for 11 month course in uh, five agriculture uh, colleges or centers of Israel through Sana Kisan Vikas Bank. I have visited all the centers uh, as I arrived here and later on I uh, have been visiting continuously to the centers and farms where our Nepalese students work there and study and uh, we usually go there to orient them regularly and attending their graduation ceremonies as well because of this COVID now I have to stop and I have to pause this uh, orientation class because of this COVID situation is uh, coming here like second phase in Israel. So they are putting some more um, restriction uh, to move in Israel. After I assumed the office, uh, embassy has started keeping records of the students so as to utilize their agricultural expertise and to provide it as per the need of government of Nepal and the private sector. This is the uh, keen point. Uh, whenever I meet the officials of Israel, they always ask, what you are doing for your students who graduated from Israel in agriculture sector when they go back to Nepal. In Nepal, there are almost around 3000 uh, students, graduated students, and uh, we have to find their opportunities in Nepal. So they always ask to make this database. So we started from our Nepal embassy to collect their data. Uh, and then we are disseminating that data to the government uh, sectors in Nepal and also private sectors, whoever uh, they need to cope such students as expert and consultant. And also uh, we are not focusing on this agro student uh, uh, to increase their number, uh, but also we are trying to enhance, uh, to increase the scholarship uh, in Nepal for that. Uh, we informed that we need to do cultural agreement, ed education agreement to provide any scholarship uh, for Nepali students in Nepal. And also Israel has developed many technologies and innovations in health, education, IT sectors that can be also introduced in Nepal. So we are also working on it. And I got opportunity to participate the 25th anniversary of the program for students in agriculture held at Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I was requested to speak on behalf of Asia. As the training period of 11 months is uh, not sufficient, it's not, not much sufficient, I urged on behalf of Asian countries to select best students and provide them training for extra period so that uh, to enhance their capacity to act as consultant when they go back to their countries, which is not happening now. So they are working on it as we requested them. The state of Israel is a pioneer of agricultural technology and has substantially increased its per unit productivity within a limited land for a 
limited number of species by the use of high-tech structures, mechanization, and proper dissemination of technical knowledge among farmers. Possibly no other country like Israel has helped the world uh, with so much agricultural breakthrough in terms of food security and food sovereignty. This is the reality. And also students are uh, much uh, benefited and hope that they will apply their knowledge and ideas, uh, what uh, they gained and uh, they will uh, definitely implement uh, in their countries uh, as a good agricultural practices they received here. And also uh, one uh, achievement, it happened here, that Yomoyu has been signed between Araba Nepal and ICAT. So after this signing uh, Yomoyu, I hope that some students, uh, not only students, maybe some experts uh, and farmers can be benefited to get uh, training for their capacity building. And another uh, sectors I would like to highlight, uh, foreign employment, which is, uh, very, very potential area in Israel. And Israel is uh, the best country uh, to come here to work for employment because um, Israel is very uh, security based country and uh, very friendly country and protect not only their citizen to the foreign citizen also they protect a lot. Uh, and for the female uh, people, um, Israel is the best place to come to work. And um, as I uh, exhorted, the pilot project was successful uh, about these caregivers, and we have been striving to reopen the caregiver sectors in full place. However, it took seven months for me to make them agree. Uh, there are around uh, now caregivers here in uh, Israel, 2,400 caregivers, and some of them we have to repatriate uh, before uh, three weeks uh, back. Uh, after because of this COVID pandemic situations and they need to go back to Nepal. So we help them also. And uh, for uh, the upcoming uh, new caregivers, uh, now the situation is uh, uh, very open. The current news I would like to share he, uh, here that uh, the day before yesterday, we succeeded to accomplish Nepal-Israel bilateral consultations on roadmap for negotiation of a bilateral agreement regarding the recruitment of auxiliary workers for long-term care facilities in Israel via high-level Zoom meeting between Ministry of Foreign Affairs, FIBA, Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Health together from Israeli side, and from Nepali side, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Labor, and Department of Foreign Employment. And Israel Embassy in Nepal, Nepal Embassy in Israel. We did a Zoom meeting high-level Zoom meeting uh, to bring caregivers uh, here in Israel and the demand Israeli side, they announced around 500 caregivers in nursing sector, in hospitals, nursing homes and day care centers. This is quite different than the previous, uh, we did pilot project and we uh, have been uh, bringing the caregivers. This is quite different. The another agreement will again, uh, it, will, it will happen. But after this successful of this bringing around 500 caregivers, if we could be successful, then definitely that will be increased uh, near future. And I hope that uh, thousands and thousands of Nepalese people can come here uh, to work as caregivers in Israel. And not only that, we are also trying to open up new sectors of employment in construction sector and hotel sector. And also, the additionally, we are also exploring uh, Nepalese farmers to work in Israel. This is the sector for the foreign employment. And we did work on education sector also. Uh, after my arrival, we were successful to increase 30 quota students uh, in learn and earn agro studies. Because when I left Nepal, I heard that uh, they decreased uh, they, uh, some, some Nepalese students. Uh, for this loan and on project. Then after I arrived here, uh, uh, Nepal Embassy worked very hard to increase their number and happily to say that uh, some around 30 uh, students, uh, they uh, got uh, the opportunity. Uh, and uh, we are also trying to increase uh, the number of Nepali students, uh, not only agriculture sector, to bring students uh, in Israel for intermediate course, bachelor, master, PhD, and fellowship in scholarship in various fields of studies. Uh, 
Uh, and for this, we have to do education agreement, as I mentioned before. Uh, and this is uh, in our top most priority sectors in Israel. We are working uh, in this sector also. And I met uh, with some Nepalese graduates uh, where they studied in different universities in Israel. We uh, uh, even tried to organize extensive of visits uh, at the level of professors, doctors, scientists, teachers, engineers, students, academicians, uh, faculty members, and other levels so that both sides will be benefited. Um, and I would like to uh, request here uh, from this webinar, uh, I would like to disseminate the information to especially the students. It is very easy to come to study in Israel if they can personally uh, make satisfy to the professor, to the concerned um, university and concerned areas. If the professor is happy, uh, they will give scholarship for any students in the world. So, so many students from different countries, they are coming here. Why not uh, from Nepal? From Nepal, we saw only 18, 19 students, uh, they came here in their personal capacity. Personal capacity, they can come here. So I would like to open up these uh, areas to come students to study in Israel. And Israel is also very best uh, country to study in education sector. And we, we uh, were also successful. Uh, we in the Nepal Embassy and the Nepal Embassy in uh, Israel and uh, Israel Embassy in uh, uh, Nepal. We are working together every time, uh, like each day, Ambassador Beni and we are talking each other how to uh, do work together. And we were successful to do high level telephone talks between Prime Minister of Nepal, uh, Right Honorable KP Sharma Oli, and Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, had. Uh, telephone uh, conversations uh, very early time, like uh, 20 April 2019. Already they spoke, and then uh, after, at the time of uh, the day starts of our 60 years anniversary on the June 1st, uh, 2020, we also did second time uh, high level conversations between two prime ministers uh, of Nepal and Israel. And they discussed on various matters of Nepal-Israel bilateral relationship and uh, mutually invited each other for the exchange of visits. Prime Minister Excellency uh, Benjamin Netanyahu thanked the Prime Minister Oli for the support that Nepal is extending towards Israel in multilateral forums. The telephone talk contributed to increase the number of Nepali students coming to Israel for agriculture training also. I can say that proudly. And it can be benefit, uh, believed that the telephone talks at the level of prime ministers will bring the bilateral relations uh, to a new height. And our prime minister also uh, uh, had a telephone talk with the president uh, of the state of Israel also. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, high level talks between two presidents of uh, Cyprus and Israel, uh, and uh, also prime minister of Israel with our prime minister, two foreign ministers, they invited each other and forwarded their request uh, to visit uh, their uh, countries. Also, we passed these messages uh, and uh, I uh, believed and I hope uh, that I confirmed that it helped a lot to protect Nepalese, at least in this COVID pandemic too. And also, uh, we were successful to, uh, to uh, make successful high-level visits of our ministers from Nepal. Minister of Land Management, Cooperatives and Poverty Alleviation, Honorable Padma Kumari Ariali visited uh, in 2019. The bilateral talks uh, held with Minister of uh, Labor, the Construction Minister, Minister of Agriculture showed their willingness to support Nepal in various ways. She was informed uh, the land mapping, geodesy, cadaster, and geoinformatics, advanced identification, tracking, and security solution. The land information systems included secured land title certification, secure portal where landowners can handle their land-related affairs, pay their bills, strong audit trail, and reporting capabilities. It showed uh, land management practices with all inclusive solution technology was briefed to her. Uh, then later, Minister of uh, Culture, Tourism, and Civil Aviation of Nepal, Honorable Yogi Swatrai, visited the State of Israel in 2020 at the invitation of Israeli Tourism Minister, His Excellency Yariv Levin. Now he is the speaker in the Knesset. 
uh, to participate in the tourism market, international tourism market 2020. And they discussed uh, about the possibilities of operating high direct flights between Nepal and Israel, along with other tourism related issues, including the signing of a memorandum of understanding between two tourism ministries. The bilateral meetings held with the Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Economy has brought a lot of hopes to enhance our bilateral relations in the areas of culture, tourism, civil aviation, agriculture, labor, energy, trade and investment, among others. And also another high level visit from Chief Secretary of Nepal, Mr. Lokdarshan Regni visited uh, Israel in 2019. He is the highest official ever visited Israel. He met his counterpart in Israel and held bilateral talks to increase the relations at a bureaucratic level between the two countries. After the continued and rigorous efforts following the talk and proposal of establish, uh, to establish center of excellence in agriculture sector, Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs arranged a visit of Ambassador Gil Haskell. Uh, but we also arranged um, uh, all the high level meetings, uh, not only I, I accompanied uh, Ambassador Gil Haskell. Uh, we arranged high-level meetings uh, with uh, Right Honorable Prime Minister and nine ministers in Nepal, in coordination with uh, Embassy of Israel in Nepal also. The visit concluded the draft agreement of YOMOYU to establish Agriculture Center of Excellence, uh, which, which has entered the phase of shining uh, at the last stage now. The meeting was also held to do YOMOYU on energy, YOMOYU on education, science, culture, and sports. We also handed over the invitation letter from Right Honorable President of Nepal to His Excellency President of Israel uh, to, stay, to have a state, uh, his state visit to Nepal. Perhaps he will uh, visit uh, Nepal after this uh, corona pandemic situation. And another, I would like to highlight some of the social uh, promotional networking uh, we did after uh, my arrival. I visited uh, Ulsan Medical Center, uh, Save a Child's Heart, whose support made Nepali baby Avital's surgery possible. I would like to highlight this uh, case because it's very important for us how the Israeli people are so much uh, cordial and helpful. This Avita baby, she had a congenital health problem which uh, was treated in Wolfson Medical Center in Israel uh, with the support of Mr. Morris Khan. And he's a well-known philanthropist and one of the major donors of uh, this uh, uh, shock as uh, Israel-based international humanitarian organization whose initiatives have saved more than 5,000 lives and restored eyesights of thousands of people. I met him and thanked him, uh, thanked the medical team uh, for such uh, generosity. And I also extended uh, him uh, the invitation uh, to Mr. Khan to visit Nepal for the health campaign in eyes and heart related issues. And he's very happy to come to Nepal but probably after this uh, corona again. And also um, uh, I have been participated in different uh, uh, programs uh, and seminars uh, held by Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, Government of Israel. And once uh, President of State of Israel hosted Women in Diplomacy Network at his residence, issues on women empowerment, in involvement and motivation were discussed in the network where I highlighted the exemplary constitutional provisions of Nepal stating about the alternative representation of male and female in governments, government's vital post and opportunities for women in Nepal. So we highlighted they are very much uh, impressed about uh, Nepal after listening this uh, uh, environment. On uh, 7 August 2019, uh, I met uh, with veteran singer Gali Otari also, the first Israeli Eurovision contestant who sang about Nepal around 40 years ago. Because I want to, I want to highlight because of her, so many Israelis uh, come to Nepal. She has been making Nepal popular among Israelis with that song about Nepal. And she applauded me and uh, the embassy for coming to see her concert saying that Nepal is not far away now because uh, she explained in her song that uh, there is a country, Nepal is uh, very far away and uh, the, Nepal is a very beautiful country, she uh, explained in her song. And she told uh, when I met her that Nepal is not far away now because of the ambassador of Nepal is here. And uh, later on, I found that many Israelis visited Nepal because of her song. So I, I admired her and the writer of the song for their wonderful job. 
And uh, one good news is I can now sing her song, uh, that song also. And usually I used to visit uh, some different uh, people uh, who, ha who have very concern with Nepal and especially on my birthday, I met with a family of uh, late Omar Shemes who lost her life in a road accident in Nepal five years ago. Also, I met with parents of late Captain Tamar Ariel as Israeli Air Force navigator and Israel's first female Orthodox uh, pilot who lost her life in the Himalayan blizzard of Nepal in 2014 at the age of uh, 20, uh, 25. And uh, Israeli government admired her a lot. Captain Tamar lost her life in course of rescuing victims of avalanche in Annapurna region of Nepal. Embassy salutes their families uh, and such uh, other families who showed their courage to live even in such difficult times of losing their dears in Nepal and hopes their stories would inspire, inspire generations to generation and convey the message that could be the unprecedented of our lives anywhere in the world. And my active involvement in many events, programs organized by government of uh, Israel, diplomatic missions, social networks, uh, rotary clubs, schools, universities, colleges, hospitals, uh, kibbutz, moshav, so many companies, international women. I'm the member of international women uh, club in Israel and also the um, program of ambassador club of Israel. Uh, I usually visit them to increase our relations to promote Nepal and of course Israel also. Uh, and also we, uh, Nepal Embassy participated uh, in Nepalese program, uh, caregivers uh, program, and the UN missions, UNIFIL, ONDOF, ONSO, they are here in Israel, and Nepalese students in different colleges. And another sector I would like to highlight about the business sectors, uh, private sectors, uh, because we uh, have been in touch with a Chamber of Commerce in Israel. Nepali artists participated in international art and craft festivals, which is one of the biggest exhibitions in Israel 2019. And 2020 also they are planning for this uh, because of these situations, uh, they, will, they are uh, trying to postpone it. And when the artists came, uh, I, we went to visit their still. Uh, when uh, we uh, were found that their, all of their jewelries, handicrafts, arts uh, were sold. Uh, in, uh, were sold almost completely. It means that there are so much scope in uh, and we were successful uh, to do YOMOYU between Nepal Israel Chamber of Commerce and Israel Nepal Chamber of Commerce on May 21, 2020. Uh, and I'm very happy to announce here that uh, for the very first time here in Israel, it opened Nepali restaurant, Burkha restaurant in Israel in Tel Aviv. And we added, Nepal Embassy uh, successfully added uh, their uh, restaurant in database in the list of experience Nepal, welcome Nepal.com catalog. Their number is 598. So that in the world, whenever the people just search that uh, Google uh, NepalWelcome.com uh, to search the restaurant in Israel, then they will find this Gorkha restaurant and they can come uh, throughout the world, wherever in the world they can come, they can come to uh, eat Nepali food, Nepali cuisine in Israel. And we are also trying to facilitate to import Nepali goods, as I mentioned before, in Israeli market. And another uh, very potential sector is health. Health uh, sector is very, very uh, significant in Israel. Uh, due to continuous effort of Nepal Embassy, we are succeeded to provide a scholarship to give a scholarship for one doctor from Nepal to study in Hadassah Hospital in Israel, but yet we don't know who is he, who is that lucky doctor. Uh, we don't know. When he come to visit us, then definitely perhaps we will meet him and we will, came, uh, we will come to know. And we are also trying to explore the other doctors, nurses, sisters for other hospitals uh, for their scholarship and fellowship as well. Uh, and um, another um, uh, one uh, good thing uh, we did that we have established the committee of the doctors from Nepal and Israel, uh, Nepal Israel Corona Initiative. We established to combat COVID situation, uh, and they are regularly uh, they are holding uh, the virtual meetings uh, between Nepali and Israeli doctors every. In a week they are holding these virtual meetings 
and it almost five times they did it. And Nepali doctors, uh, even from the Karnali, uh, the far uh, western uh, region, uh, doctors from so far away, they can uh, even have um, connection with the Israeli doctors now. They can ask questions, they can uh, share their ideas, experiences uh, about this COVID situations. They are doing this. and. Uh, we are also exercising to get fellowship programs for doctors and nurses, as I uh, highlighted before. And another, uh, we uh, promoted uh, culture and literature relations. Nepal Academy and Hebrew Writers Association have signed a memorandum of understanding to enhance mutual understanding um, and friendly relationship uh, between academicians, writers, poets, scholars, and intellectuals of both countries to promote art, culture, literature, etc. Both of them agreed to exchange visits and uh, some um, uh, writers and literature already visited uh, Nepal when they uh, when we uh, did uh, Yomoyu between these two institutions. Uh, from Nepal, Nepal Academy's Chancellor, he visited uh, Israel in 2019 and they did Yomoyu. And now, later on, they are uh, working on Hitler and Yehudi, which was uh, written by for um, our late uh, Prime Minister D.P. Koirala. They are translating it in English. And some uh, poems, they are translating in Hebrew also from Nepali version to Hebrew version. So they are having the connections now. And now uh, the other areas, uh, what we uh, did, uh, we were successful uh, to accomplish uh, some uh, some uh, uh, areas that we succeeded to place a new display board with the help of Israeli authority, which uh, now rightly states that Mount Everest is in Nepal. That is in Kalia Beach. Kalia Beach is nearby the Dead Sea, it's throughout the Dead Sea. There are so many, it's so long uh, beach. And uh, in that beach, there was a display, holding board display with uh, the other countries named, but uh, there was uh, Mount Everest, but it doesn't, it didn't mention Nepal. Then we work hard within a month, uh, we were successful to change uh, the name. Uh, Mount Everest is in Nepal uh, because this is a very important place. Four million tourists visit this beach annually. And we were also successful to form the Nepal-Israel Parliamentary Friendship Group in uh, April 2019. When I, before I left Nepal, I spoke with the former speaker of Nepal and he is very helpful to establish, to form this uh, friendship group. And we went to meet in Kenneset uh, here in parliament and we requested to have exchange of visits if they can also form Israel-Nepal Parliamentary Friendship Group. So we can exchange visits of parliamentarians to share uh, their ideas, knowledges, practices with each other. And uh, after this, all of these initiatives, uh, um, we, Nepalese, uh, we Nepal Embassy, I received appreciation letter from Ambassador Club on 17th February 2020 as I'm selected as Ambassador of the Year for 2019-2020 by the Ambassador's Club of Israel among 90 heads of mission based in Israel. According to the Ambassador Club, I'm awarding for the excellent performance as a diplomat serving the interest of Nepal in Israel, as well as advancing the relations between the two countries. I really, really feel proud uh, to get this award of excellence uh, discerned by the club. And it is really, I would like to say that it is the honor of uh, Nepal and Nepalese people. And uh, on behalf of uh, our country, we would like to thank the government of uh, Israel and also Ambassador Club of Israel for this award. And uh, now we are having uh, some uh, work for the pipe pipeline. Uh, we are trying to do YAMOYU between tourism ministries, YAMOYU in health, YAMOYU between education, science, culture, and sports, smart grid center of excellence where thousands of uh, engineers will be trained for their capacity building in Nepal. And other is visa exemption for diplomatic passport holders has reached the final stage. And we are trying to make collaboration between scientists and engineers uh, of Nepal and Israel. And um, Nepal Embassy has set up few plans to celebrate uh, the year 2020 as 60th anniversary of establishment of our diplomatic relationship, such as 
would like to highlight. I'm now at the point of the closing uh, of my presentation. And we uh, are trying to make exchange of high level visits from both sides. Uh, if it is not this pandemic, definitely our Prime Minister and President of Israel, ha they have already been exchanged of their visits, but later after this corona, we will be successful uh, to make this happen. And we are making a book uh, to commemorate the 60 years anniversary of our diplomatic relations. For that book, we already received uh, messages from our uh, president, Prime Minister, Foreign Minister of Nepal, and President, Prime Minister, and Foreign Minister of Israel. We already received good wishes for this book, and we uh, collected most of the high-level diplomats uh, related with the Nepal-Israel relations. We already received, and it is now in the press, and we will launch it within this hour, 60 years anniversary this year in 2020. And we are trying to organize a walkathon exhibition uh, but uh, I hope that it is it couldn't be successful very very soon uh, because of this uh, situation. But we can uh, establish uh, to uh, bring stamp of uh, the two countries and exchange of uh, plant seeds, and there are also among others. If we can do exchange of plant seeds, definitely we will enrich our agriculture sector and irrigation sector also. And I would like to conclude uh, my uh, few words. Uh, with my few words to say that we, um, we are very proudly say that uh, Nepal Embassy is able to enhance political relations, socio-economic relations, cultural relations and others. We have been witnessing a growing number of tourists from Israel to Nepal every year. I hope this trade will further increase after COVID. I have requested in various programs to all the Israelis to make Nepal a next holiday destination. Gilad Kohen, who is division head, of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of, uh, who looks after Nepal. He happily offered Israeli citizens to choose destination uh, now in Asia. Uh, and the, uh, the country is Nepal. Now to visit in Asia, the country is Nepal. Uh, he spoke in our national day in 2019. Nepal always remembers the outstanding support of Israel, sending a delegation of 280 professionals and government officials to Nepal for rescue operations immediately after the earthquake 2015, as Ambassador Benny mentioned this. The exchange of visits of heads of state, heads of the government is most awaited to further enhance our relations. And Israel's uh, government's continued support via Moshav to train and educate Nepali students and other Nepalese professionals uh, have greatly contributed in introducing new techniques, technologies, and methods to boost agricultural production and other sectors too. I am very much optimistic that Israel will extend its cooperation in the days ahead to further deepen the relationship. I am confident that our bilateral relations will grow stronger and more stronger in the days ahead. Thank you very much with these words. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Her Excellency. I must apologize that I got disconnected and I could not introduce her, though she need no introduction in Nepal. Uh, Dr. Anjan Sakya is currently, uh, we all know that she is serving as ambassador of Nepal to the state of Israel, and she was a board, of, board member of Prime Minister Advisory Council for Promotion of Industry and Commerce just before assuming her current position. She was Deputy Executive Director of Institute of Foreign Affairs Nepal. She was a chairperson of International Concern Center Nepal, and she holds PhD in management from Trivur University, and she was a professor at Presidential Business School, uh, which is a, a which is in West Cliff University, California, U.S. She was a lecturer of Padma Kanya Multiple College, uh, Trivur University. She has been involved in various leading organizations and professional responsibilities for more than two decades. She is a renowned singer, so she was talking about that she is able to sing uh, a song from Israel. Uh, she has sung uh, more than 100 songs in Nepali, Newari, and Bhojpuri. She has published a number of books, a dozen and a half of the book, including Foreign Policy of Nepal, Challenges and Opportunities, Vision for Foreign Affairs, Nepal-China Relations, Nepal-India Relations, Nepal-Japan Relations, Nepal-Germany, and many others. For a wide range of social work, she is honored with many national level awards like Nepal, Vidya Bhushan, Jana Seva, Sri Padak, Urkhadachin Bau, and many others. Um, uh, we have just 10 minutes, so we'll try to request our panelists, uh, participants to 
uh, ask the questions to uh, um, Excellency Benny Omar so that because he has to leave at 5.10. So uh, we have received many questions. So let me start with the questions. The first question is for uh, Excellency Benny Omar. Uh, uh, one Middle East country closed its mission from Kathmandu. India too was not happy with Nepal when it established diplomatic relations with Israel in June 1960, preceded by then Prime Minister B.P. Koyala made an official visit to Israel. Further, in late 60s, Nepal voted the Security Council Resolution 242 and 338 in favor of Israel for its right to existence. Being the first country having diplomatic relations and also its first embassy in South Asia, perhaps after Myanmar in entire Asia, how do you foresee the plans to take Nepal-Israel relations to an exemplary heights, recalling this unique friendship of difficult times when Israel's official presence was not in the region? Well, thank you for the question. Uh, I think we are lucky to have Ambassador Dr. Anjan Shakya in Israel. She is very dynamic very creative, and she doesn't leave an unearthed stone to check in every possible field. Like you could hear before, how many activities you are participating in, if it is vis-a-vis -vis our government, our prime minister, president, all the levels, uh, of course, in the foreign ministry, the ambassador of Nepal in Israel nowadays. Uh, I myself, I um, suppose within a, about uh, two, two, three months, uh, to, to end my tenure in office. Uh, and I'm sure that the ideas Ambassador Shakya was uh, sharing with us will, will mature by this time. We will be able to sign all the agreements pending and there will be new agreements to be signed in the near future. Uh, and I'm sure since there is a very good will in both sides to, to enhance and to diversify the <clears throat> relationship, in many fields, because it is the interest of our two countries. And the fact that we are a bit far away from each other, you have the highest peak in the world, we have the lowest point on the earth. But I think the relationship is warm, there is very good will, we have many ideas, and we can work more intensively. It's a pity that uh, COVID-19 is avoiding trips from one country to the other. But I hope that once the sky will be open, the International Tribhuvan Airport will be open. You will see Israeli businessmen coming, uh, people from academia, culture, and of course, many Israeli tourists, as in the past, uh, they will keep coming to this beautiful country of yours. Not only to thanks to Gali Atari, but she contributed enormously to that with a beautiful song that Ambassador Shakya is singing so well. It's amazing, you should hear it. <laughs> and no wonder she was selected by the Club of Diplomats in Israel as the best performing ambassador among all the diplomatic community in Israel. We have more than 100 diplomats over there, heads of missions, and she is the one. I tell you, it was a wonderful decision to ask Dr. Anjan Shakya to be ambassador of Nepal in Israel. Thank you so much, dear colleague. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Another question is also for you. Uh, maybe uh, just two questions so that you can wrap up in two, three minutes. Israel and Nepal has excellent relations and Israel has supported Nepal in its development. However, Nepal is a Himalayan country which lacks infrastructure such as roads and transportation facilities. So is there any project in the past or coming up in future related to connectivity? And last question for you is, Sir, would you yes. like to highlight if there is any security engagement or defense cooperation between the two countries? Well, let me start from the second one, please. <laughs> there is a very good, fruitful dialogue between the establishments of uh, defense and security uh, between the two countries. And it's been going on for many more years in the past. We are happy to work with the Ministry of Defense and uh, with the Deputy Prime Minister Ishwar Pokharel, and also the Nepal Army, who has a long tradition of working with the Israeli Army, many, many more years. And uh, by the way, the Chief of Army Staff, General Tapa, was the Chief of, uh, you know, the guys back in Israel in the northern border. And as Ambassador Shakya mentioned before, that you have guys in Unifil, Undof, Unso, and this is going back many, many years. And we have cooperation in training and exchanging of know-how. 
And I see a potential following the meetings I had with both Minister of Defense of Nepal and the Chief of Army Staff, not only in the field of security. I can tell you that following the idea of having an excellent center of excellence in agriculture with, with the government of Nepal on the federal level with the Ministry of Agriculture and seven provinces, Ambassador Shakya can testify, can tell you that in December when Ambassador Gila Skell, the head of Mashai was here, we met also the army guys and they would like to have a center of excellence in agriculture for the army. And I believe with them, we can do it even more quickly because, you know, army, they have a, a culture, efficiency, they work, you know, time, time is very important and they are very disciplined. So I'm very optimistic. Maybe the first center of excellence in agriculture will be with the army. So it's not only security defense, but also civilian things because the idea of General Tapa is, and he's working with the guys from Lamjung and the guys from Aikat, Arava, Arava, Nepal, in Lamjung, the idea is to train a army servicemen who are living, uh, retiring from the army. They are still young, in good shape. Give them an opportunity to become wonderful farmers using modern agriculture like we do in Israel. It's a wonderful project and I'm sure we're gonna work on it very soon. Going back to the, uh, the qu previous question about what we can do together in the field of uh, infrastructure. Uh, I can tell you that maybe in terms of uh, finance, we may not be able to, to bring too much money to, to the government of Nepal. But we, what we can offer is know-how, as we do within Mashav activities and fields of cooperation. This is the strongest part if it is, you know, artificial intelligence, high tech and so on. We can, we can help with uh, advising, planning and, and giving good ideas. We may not be able to be rich enough to offer finance but we, we can share a lot of know-how that we accumulated in Israel. I think one of the subjects, when I look at the landslides of the last few weeks following the monsoon, you know, the question of water management, Israel has a lot of experience which we share with many countries all over the world, not only developing countries, also some of the countries in the United States are coming to learn from the Israeli experience in water management. So we could share a lot of our know-how with Nepal in this field. You may have too much water sometimes. Sometimes we have a problem of desert, not enough. You have sometimes too much. Both problems can be tackled using Israeli know-how and experience. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, we know that you have to leave at 5, 3 and 15. Uh, so you may leave whenever you feel comfortable, but we'd love okay. to have you for a longer time if possible. Now, the next question is for uh, Dr. Anjan Sakya, uh, the question is, uh, do you think Nepal government has harnessed the potentials of engaging with Israel as Israel enjoys excellence in several sectors? So do you think Nepal has really used its potentials by engaging with Israel? Uh, second is, uh, during your tenure as ambassador, what is the top priority to, to get support from Israel for development of Nepal? Uh, thank you very much uh, for, your, uh, for the question. Uh, definitely, uh, there are very much uh, potentiality uh, for engaging uh, in different sectors between Nepal and Israel. And I hope that uh, Nepal definitely will cooperate uh, in this uh, diverse field, what uh, we are getting from Israel in different sectors to enrich our um, knowledge, ideas, technology uh, uh, in different uh, sectors in Nepal. And we are um, uh, working very hard from Nepal Embassy as well as from Israel Embassy uh, to disseminate and uh, to inform each and every situation, so whatever we have, uh, to make this uh, happen uh, very near future. So definitely uh, uh, Nepal uh, will get much uh, cooperation from Israel. And another, you are mentioning about the top priority. Actually, the top priority is, uh, my top priority is the self-employment in Nepal. We have to think self-employment. We mustn't uh, be stand only in remittance. Remittance is the sectors that we are gaining uh, from GDP in, in percentage, uh, the, the remittance uh, contribute a lot 
in our GDP, but uh, I felt uh, I feel that we have to change this scenario with the same employment uh, in Nepal. We have to give employment opportunities in in in, in uh, Nepal. That sector is agriculture sector. So we sh should establish. Uh, agriculture center of excellence in Nepal. If we can establish thousands and thousands Nepalese uh, professionals, Nepalese farmers, Nepalese students, uh, they can uh, get opportunity, work opportunity in Nepal. And also they will have interactions in research and development. Uh, they will establish laboratory. It, it will be a huge project. Or Nepal. If at least we can establish one center, then we can understand how it is important, significant for our country. Then second is definitely caregivers. Uh, I, I, I have to mention here caregivers, which already we did successful um, uh, positive uh, uh, scenario from Israel. We already received. Now it took like seven months uh, for us, for me especially, to convince them to open up in full phase. Uh, to bring uh, caregivers from Nepal to Israel because they are not happy because of our own problem in Nepal. In in past, uh, we have some problem from our Nepali size. That's why it was stopped. Then later on, it is uh, it uh, begins it uh, begins with the pilot project. And uh, I requested them pilot project uh, was already successful, so we have to uh, talk with the full place. Now they are positive and they agreed to do full place mm, and. Now they opened up around 500 caregivers to bring from Nepal, especially in nursing sectors. This will be the uh, very, uh, uh, very secured areas, I would like to mention. It is not like the caregivers will come uh, in home, just, uh, made like in uh, home employers, but governments is taking care uh, for them uh, and employers will be there, but they will work uh, in hospitals in um, nursing homes. So this is quite different than the previous one. Uh, and around 500, uh, we were successful uh, to uh, make this happen. And uh, another is, uh, I, I would like to tell you about the education sector is very important and uh, health sector is uh, as well important. And we, the, uh, because you, you know, we know that uh, Israel is the first country who come to help us at the time of, uh, our uh, this um, crisis situation. So, uh, for um, point of uh, in point of view, this also we uh, have to think for this crisis management uh, and emergency management system. Uh, we have to uh, bring some technology from Nepal. So we are having landsliding problems now. We, I'm going to meet with the Minister of uh, Transport in Israel to ask uh, about the uh, transfer of technology in landsliding, uh, how to uh, protect our citizens for having these casualties, which you are facing uh, uh, almost all the years. So uh, this kind of uh, things, uh, emergency management system, these are also very topmost priority sectors, I think, from Israel. Thank you, ma'am. And now we have two more questions, and with that, we'll end our program. Uh, China and India took more than four decades to establish full diplomatic relations with Israel in 1992. What were the factors that paved the way for Nepal to becoming a pioneer nation in establishing, in establishing diplomatic relations with Israel? And last question is, Nepal has huge potential in tourism and hydropower, which can transform Nepal's economy. Do you think Israel can play a role in this, uh, in the development of tourism and hydropower? If yes, what are those roles and what steps are you taking to achieve that goal of Nepal? Nepal actually, Nepal established uh, the first diplomatic relationship uh, in South Asia with uh, Israel. Uh, then after that, I think that because of the political situations, Nepal established uh, its uh, mission in Israel very lately. Uh, but uh, the cooperations already begin since very long. Mm, and uh, I can uh, tell you that there are almost more, uh, 30 agriculture center of center of excellence in uh, India. Uh, they uh, got from Israel technology. So we are lacking behind. So we have to, there are so many potentiality and Israeli government, they are very keen to help Nepal. And every Israeli, if you ask, 
them then they know uh, nepal very well they love nepal very much and we have to explore it and i'm trying to reach with the silver zone um, age group um, most of the israelis the youth israelis after the uh, army training they used to come to nepal and actually uh, they don't they, they they are saving their money they don't want to pay much they don't want to spend much so we are not getting much uh, economic vibrant from this uh, youth israeli but we got much more strengthened relations with the youth israelis when they go back and then uh, now the youth israeli who were in nepal they are now at the age of 60 70 almost when uh, i met they are telling that uh, i went nepal 30 years ago i went nepal 15 years ago i went nepal 18 years ago and they are still remembering uh, the field nepal that's why we are trying to cope uh, those uh, israelis who love nepal to uh, bring investment opportunities in nepal so those uh, matured uh, parents uh, uh, citizens we are trying to toss upon them and we are convincing them so uh, they are very much uh, impressed and they told that they would like to come to nepal uh, for the investment and for uh, as a tourist also and tourism sector we already talked with the minister of tourism in israel that we uh, are going to do a memorandum of understanding between tourism sectors uh, with both ministries of nepal and israel so definitely there will be some uh, procedures, process, uh, mechanism that we can promote uh, our tourism sector of Nepal and Israel also. Uh, and many uh, Israeli people would like to invest in infrastructure development where Nepal uh, tourism uh, could be benefited. So these areas definitely uh, it could be happen when this situation uh, will be solved soon. And hydro sectors, uh, we have been listening that so many Israelis come to us and visit us. They want to uh, know how to uh, invest in Nepal in the sector of hydro sector. Uh, they really like uh, to invest in uh, those sectors, not only these sectors, they want to establish uh, dairy farms uh, and livestock also. They want to invest in those sectors where they see the viable area in Nepal that we can export uh, the milk the dairy products uh, not inside uh, Nepal, out of Nepal, in abroad also we can export and they would like to uh, cooperate us, they would like to inform us, uh, they would like to uh, say know how, how to increase uh, the international market. So uh, we uh, have to work on it and uh, definitely very near future uh, we will receive such cooperation. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, excellencies, finally, we have come to the end of the program. I would like to thank both our excellencies for their valuable time. Uh, it was excellent presentation and discussion. I, on behalf of CDD and NICE, would like to thank both the speakers for her time, for their time and uh, discussion. We'd also like to thank our wonderful participants for their question. The video of this program will be available on YouTube for everyone in a few hours. Hope to see you at our next program. Uh, thank you. Good night. Thank you very much.